I have a love affair with brownies. Box brownies, homemade brownies. Your brownies, perfection. Mm. Oh my God. You guys, that's so good. Can you see that? Here's a present for you. <laughs> my friends, I would just like to say that I have a love affair with brownies. I literally sign off all of my work emails loving brownies. Brownies are like my thing. And I won't lie, box brownies, perfection. Giardelli double chocolate, if you know, you know. But sometimes it's really nice to make a homemade brownie. It feels more exciting, you feel more accomplished, and sometimes it can even be better than a box brownie. So I've created this recipe and it is like one of our most popular recipes on the blog. They're gonna be much more reminiscent of box brownies. So they have that really, really nice chewiness. It feels like when you bite into it that the brownie almost gives a little bit. And it's just this really, really luxurious, but not too dense brownie. One of the telltale signs of a homemade brownie is that you don't get that beautiful, shiny, crackly top. So I have over years and years of testing figured out exactly how to get that shiny, crackly top that you get in a box brownie in your homemade brownies. So that is what we are doing today. Without a doubt, the best brownie that I've ever made and I am so excited to show you how to do it. In terms of ingredients, it's relatively straightforward. We have a light brown sugar. This is gonna to contribute to that really nice chewiness. We also have cocoa powder. I am using this Dutch processed cocoa powder. Real quick little like mm, on cocoa powders. There's usually two types of cocoa powders that you see at the store. There is Dutch processed cocoa powder and natural cocoa powder. So natural cocoa powder is an unwashed, untreated cocoa powder, whereas Dutch processed cocoa powder is cocoa powder that is neutralized to reduce the acidity of the cocoa powder. So this leaves your cocoa with a much more balanced taste. So when you have a final baked good, it tastes richer, it doesn't have as much like to it, it's more like ah. I think that describes it well. We're gonna use a little bit of vanilla extract, butter, flour, eggs, and salt. So let's talk about how we're gonna get this crackly top on our brownies. There's two things that we're going to do to get that. One is we're gonna take 10 tablespoons of butter into a large microwave safe bowl, and we are going to combine that with one and a quarter cups of brown sugar. Anytime you are baking with brown sugar, a properly cupped cup of brown sugar is a packed cup of brown sugar. You'll see it holds its shape as it goes down, so that's what we want. And the first thing we are going to do is we are going to put this into a microwave on high in 30 second increments. And it's gonna go in for 30 seconds. Okay. My microwave's super weak, so my butter's not even all the way melted, but we're just gonna, again, mix them all together and then we're gonna go in for another 30 seconds. Okay. Things are starting to bubble a little bit. We're gonna go in just for one more 30 second interval. And basically what we're doing, we're helping to break down some of those sugar granules so they get smaller, so they get almost like more liquidy. This is gonna help us later when we wanna get that really nice crackly top. Okay, we did it. There's a little bit of some of the granules of sugar. That's okay, you're not gonna melt it completely. But see how we've started to get a little bit of a sheen? This is what we want. So to this, we are going to add two eggs and then we are going to use a hand mixer or a stand mixer, either are fine. Um, and you are going to mix that until it really lightens in color. And what you're doing once you add these eggs is you're creating a sort of meringue and the meringue is what's gonna give you that crackly top. So let's do it. As soon as that's mixed, egg two can go right in. And then we're just gonna mix this. We can go to high speed. This is gonna take about a minute. 
All right, so you can see our mixture has lightened in color. This is what we are looking for. So now we are ready to add our dry ingredients. But before I do, I wanna show you how I line all of my baking pans because this is a question I get asked all the time. So I'm gonna show you a quick tutorial on it. Welcome to my Back to Basics. How to line parchment paper on your pan. So when you're baking, it is so important to make sure that there is something in between your baked good and the pan it's being baked in. Now, I grew up in a household where that meant taking butter and putting butter on a pan, but honestly, that's way messier and way more work than just using my good old friend parchment paper. So I have these parchment paper sheets and they're good to go. What I love about these is that they lie perfectly flat. When you get a parchment paper roll, you end up with a curled piece of parchment paper and that can be really frustrating. So I love these. Now, I wanna make sure that I'm lining both the bottom and the sides. So I'm gonna take two pieces of parchment paper, eh, 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 line them up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold it over the top of the pan. And then I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and I'm just going to make a cut. So now I have this perfectly fit piece of parchment paper and one's gonna go on this side and one's gonna go on this side. And now our parchment paper pan, I will just fold these down ever so slightly. You don't have to be super precise about it. So now we tuck this baby in, he's looking good. And now we have a perfectly lined pan ready for whatever baked good it is destined to hold. All right, so now we are going to add in our remaining ingredients. Vanilla extract, I would do just like a nice little squeeze, whatever floats your boat. Just mix that in until incorporated. Um, then we are going to add our final three ingredients. We have three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. Nice. Um, six tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and then a half teaspoon of salt. And then we are going to mix this, but just over like a low speed. We don't wanna go too intense now that we have our dry ingredients in there. Oh my gosh. Look at that, you guys. Gorgeous, as soon as it becomes glossy like that, look at that, it looks so good. And then I'm just gonna take a spatula and pull it around the edges just to incorporate any remaining cocoa powder. We don't wanna over mix at this step though, so that's why I'm switching to this spatula. Can you guys see this beautiful ribbony chocolate? Amazing. Okay, so here's a little trick I use to make sure that my parchment paper doesn't fall when it's baking. You can absolutely get like little clips that you can use, but I find this to be much easier. I'm gonna take a tiny little bit of batter and I'm just gonna do a little zoop like that. And I'm just gonna put that on all four sides. It's gonna act as a way for our parchment paper to stay in place. Look at that. Mm. Oh my God, you guys, that's so good. Okay, so now we're going to take our brownie batter and we are going to pour this baby in. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Now, if you wanted to, you could absolutely add a half cup of chocolate chips. You could add peanut butter chips. You could add white chocolate. Um, if you wanted to make these mocha brownies, you could add in, I would say a tablespoon of instant espresso powder. I'm just gonna go classic with these, but there are so many different variations that you can add. Ooh, you could even do like a little bit of cinnamon for sort of a Mexican chocolate type of thing. We're just gonna smooth this baby to the edges. Looking beautiful. Give this a little tap. It's just gonna make it even. And then this is going to go into a 350 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And I'll show you the perfect sign to tell if your brownies are done so that they don't get overcooked. All right, goodbye. Hello, hello, hello. All right, have you ever seen a more perfectly crackly top on a brownie? Me thinks not. Something really important about testing for doneness. All ovens, are different. Some ovens run hot, some ovens run cold, some ovens are a little bit of both. 
So every single time that you bake, no matter what a recipe says in terms of time, I always set my timer a few minutes less than the recipe states. So here's how to tell when your brownies are perfectly done. You're gonna take a knife, just a butter knife, and you're going to stick it into the center of your brownies. And when you pull that butter knife out, you want it to come out mostly clean. Okay, so let me hold this steady so you guys can see this. But do you see how you can see like a little tiny streak of brownie batter? That is good. So what this shows to us is that our brownies still have some moisture in them, but they are not so moist that the whole thing is sticking to our knife. This knife test is going to work for anything that you bake in some sort of pan. So cakes, muffins, brownies, bars, all of that stuff, this is going to be perfect for. I'm gonna show you guys how I get a really, really clean cut on my brownies. So step one, use a really sharp knife. This is gonna be so, so, so important. Um, step two, uh, if you want, just mark off sort of where you're gonna cut so you have a good idea of where those even cutting lines are. So I'm cutting these into thirds. I'm just gonna create little tiny ticks to let me know where to cut. Then you are going to take this knife, you're gonna run it under hot water between every single cut. Do you guys like how I'm like talking to you like this? <laughs> okay, let's do it. So I'm gonna run over here, just put that over hot water. The point is getting the knife hot, not getting the knife wet. We're gonna come in and do this first cut. Oh my gosh, look at that. And then see how we have some of this brownie? So we'll just wipe this off and then we'll go over to the hot water again. And I'm just gonna do this until I get brownies. I can smell it. It's like, it smells like chocolate. It's just so good. All right, and now the moment of truth. Let us take our brownies out. All right, here we go. Look at that. Look how gooey and delicious and fudgy it looks. I don't know if you guys can tell. I will show you with a bite shot though how moist this is on the inside. All right, let's go for it. Oh my God. So we have that really nice moist center, but it's not too dense. It still is really nice and like just gooey. I'm getting a really nice depth because we used that Dutch process cocoa powder. So the brownies don't taste too acidic and like a little bit sharp. They have just this really nice mellow, but deep rich chocolate flavor. I don't feel like it can get much better than this. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna eat these, maybe with a glass of milk. Yeah, guys, I feel like that would be good. Um, and if you wanna get this full recipe, I have it below in the show notes. As always, my least favorite part of the recipe, I mean, my least favorite part of the video is here. Like, comment, and subscribe if you like this. It goes a long way, and it really helps me to continue to deliver fun, slightly chaotic videos your way. Thanks so much for tuning in, you guys. I will see you next week. Ah. Today we are making the most glorious homemade cinnamon rolls. So you can see, this is a very wet dough. Push, fold, turn. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And then you're just gonna take those fingers. All right. Slide it under halfway through your rolls and then just pull it tight. 